Okay, here we go. People have been asking, how do we prep our boards or canvases? This is basically the same thing, whether it be a piece of wood or canvas. This is the only thing you guys need. You gotta get some flat uh, acrylic white house paint or whatever color you want your base to be. Unless you just want to prep this, you know. I would definitely prep it white first and then paint it a color. Or if you have a color house paint you want, you can use that as well for the background. So we're just going to use white for today. Uh, rollers, hold it on, get some tape. Because what you're going to want to do is take all the lint off this guy. I'll show you how to do that in a second. We need uh, 220 and 400 sandpaper. That's it. And what you want to do is get the 220 first, fold it, fold it in half, and then this is a little did you know kind of thing. Um, take a rag, fold it, just as you know, about as big as your sandpaper when you fold it in half. And what this does is you're saving all this sandpaper from being used. When you sand, these two touch, and you're sanding and sanding, and then if you, if you ever notice, it's always smooth on this side because you fold it in half and it's, that friction is, is there. So what you want to do is to, you can feel, you can feel that there's some sort of texture. I wouldn't do, I would just lay it on, put all four fingers here, put your thumb underneath this so that you have an equal pressure on the sandpaper. And what you're going to do is just go in circles. And I would not suggest doing this on your table that you are going to be putting resin on. Uh, I would do it away from um, your resin table because there is going to be sand dust and all that fun stuff you can see here. Uh, but you can feel, uh, you don't have to do it a lot, you're just knocking down some high points. You definitely be able to feel it. Um, oh yeah, you do need a rag with some alcohol just so you can kind of wipe off the, the uh, sanding dust. You're not soaking it, you're just getting it to where you can wipe that off. I would definitely suggest using a clean rag. But I'm just just for you guys. You can feel it already. You can feel um, that it's a, a lot smoother. Um, if you like, you can take your 400. You'll definitely be able to hear the difference as well when you, when you do this 400. A little softer, not so coarse. And you're just barely putting pressure. You just, you're not trying to make any marks. you get a map free, which I do believe they sell those. You can take what you're gonna do. You're just gonna guess that probably needs to go on there a little bit further. does to take off any lint, any loose hairs that you guys will have. I'll be sending you with your tape. You did get some new tape that's 
will definitely be showcasing here in the next day or so. It's amazing in this company. Basically, it's a tape that will stick to pretty much anything. And you can do this, and you'll get lint, and it'll still be nice and sticky. It blows my mind. That's another thing. So, now that you've done that, lint free. What you do is just take your with the white paint. And you definitely want to get a good amount on here. Because you're filling in all these little holes. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> Resin loves to find all these little holes in the wood. Don't be stingy with your You can get your slides, which you probably would want to do, just because you're going to paint it as well. Get this side. Or get your heat gun out or hair dryer, whichever one.
है Now that that is dry, you can feel it's dry. Take your 220, put a rag in there so you can check that side. Use the same side. You can feel it. You can hear that. You can feel like how paint gives it a little texture. Um, it's not necessary, but I do it every single time because I, I like it smooth. Um, and I think that it probably helps the resin. You know, if you're doing tilts, you don't get these little lines in your resin when it's because it'll, it'll catch on to the, to the little raised paint, I guess, bumps. I, I'm not sure what they're called. <laughs> but I would definitely hit it with 220. Again, you can hear it. You can hear the difference as you're sanding. How rough, like this is unsanded, and this is sanded. Like there's a big difference. You're just wanting that extra little, not texture sound. You don't have to sand it a lot because that sandpaper will knock that right down. Get your rag. This has alcohol on it. Just in case you sprayed something in the air, definitely can make sure that that's on there. Get your 400 next. Do some black circles as well. Feel any any place you've missed? You just take your sandpaper, 400, and just kind of lightly hit the spot, wipe it off. A lot of times you'll feel them on the edges. You just want to be very careful um, because if, when the sandpaper hits that edge, it will definitely. It'll go through that paint and down to your canvas or your wood, um, especially if wood because it's a different color. So just be very careful on the edges. Um, if you want, you can do another coat if you want. With a canvas, I suggest you do two coats. Definitely do two coats. And then after you're done doing that, after you're done with all the coats and sanding, I would let it set for... I don't know, an hour or so, just so it's completely dry, the edges are dry. Um, if you want, you can also sand the sides. Um, that's up to you. I guess it depends on what you're going to be doing with the sides. And then when you are ready to pour, um, all you do is get your tape. Let's see here. I'm going to focus. All right. Give it link. Tear it off. Now what I normally like to do is keep it all in the same direction as you're laying it down, which means when you apply it, don't you can put a piece here, and then you can put a piece here, and then you put a piece here, and you want to put a piece here. You're you're most likely going to run into trouble peeling it off because this will come off, then this piece, but then you have this piece. 
So this piece, this will come off, this is not under. So what I like to do is just do it all in one direction. If you have any extra hanging off the side, all you do is just cut it off. So and what I mean by all one direction is when you take the tape off, it all just comes off at one time. So if everybody's seen what it's like trying to take off tape when it's overlapped in the wrong direction. No fun. This is what I mean by making sure it's all in the same direction. Take this piece, your very first piece, fill it up, and what you're going to do is put a little tab here so that it's not sticking, so it'll kind of help you peel, start to peel it up. Make sure this is down, make sure all this is covered. You're going to put this fourth piece underneath your first piece. So then this piece will overlap. So then when, you, when you're ready to, to untape it, all you do is you just tape. Um, I guess it depends on when you take the tape off. <laughs> um, I guess it depends on what kind of resin that you're using. Um, but normally after, I would say, three or four hours, Three or four hours is good. Get a heat gun. Obviously, you're not going to want to lay it on, it, lay it flat. Um, you'll probably have to have somebody help you just to hold it with the heat gun, and you're just going to hit it right along that edge, and it'll it should come right up. That's what worked for us in the past. What you want to do is just take your knife, just cut those little spots off. Thank you. 